Hey, welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. Today we're going to go over a panfish jig thing, trailer, plastic, soft plastics. That's what we're doing here? Yeah, we're making soft plastics. Uh, already made this one. If you've seen the episode one of Soft Plastic July, I went over, or episode two, excuse me, I went over how to pour this into the mold after you 3D printed to make a 3D printed kind of a positive to make the negative out of the mold max 60 silicone that I use. And then you can shoot it with plastisol and then uh, you end up with a bait. Uh, recently I took this out on a fishing trip, caught quite a few pan fish. For this video I thought I would go over really kind of how I designed it, how I did that really quickly. We won't have to go over how to make it specifically. There's already a video for that and I'll put that down in the description below. You can check that out if you want to. And then uh, I'll just show some fishing footage using it. So. Uh, this the idea of this came, I don't know, I kind of call this one the water flea sometimes too. I call it also uh, the trident just because it has three legs. When you start to design uh, different baits, you just get something in your head and it just comes out. At least that's how it works for me. Uh, this one was kind of just sat down at the desk, thought of something I thought would have good action in the water, ended up with this. Simplest sketch ever and uh, I'll show you how to kind of just make it really quick. And then uh, we'll we'll hit the lake. So we're here in Fusion 360. If you're unfamiliar what Fusion 360 is, it's an Autodesk product. It's just a CAD software. It's free to use if you make under $100,000 a year. I don't make anything off of doing this, so obviously I qualify. Uh, it's a nice, well-rounded CAD program. If you're interested more in in-depth kind of tutorials with this program, uh, you might want to look around the YouTube tons of videos on it with people that will explain it much better than me but um, I'll try my best to get through this it's really simple real easy design and uh, this is just the sketch here you can see it straight from a top view super simple so just kind of like a little crown design with three legs coming off of the back and then this is just going to be like a body section and then kind of a head section so after you sketch this out you have it in your dimensions that you want it's very simple to turn this into a three-dimensional object. In Fusion, all I did here is I just did a revolve. This is the new Fusion 360 layout as well. A little bit of a pain to navigate, so I may have some issues finding where everything is originally here. But let's do a revolve. We're going to revolve this profile. It's going to take that blue section, and it's going to throw it around whatever we say. So I'm going to put it around this one. And our bodies are probably off so I turn those on so it would make them visible and that's what it does it just creates this nice sphere I'm doing a shift and hold my scroll wheel down that allows me to move the camera so I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna keep that there I'm gonna bring my sketch back I'm gonna do a same thing here I'm gonna revolve this even though it's a square I wanted a cylinder so I'm gonna hit a revolve again and I'm gonna go around this axis here and then I'm going to, in my operation, I'm going to say join. I want those two pieces together. So I'm going to say OK. Then over here, I'm going to take both of those profiles. So I want the whole part of the crown, I guess. And I'm just going to press pull that out. That's just going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it uh, symmetric. So it's both halves. And I don't know what I want this thickness wise. I'll probably want it like 1.8 millimeters, something pretty, pretty small. The thinner you go, the more action it has. So I'm gonna go probably two millimeters or less. So if I go two millimeters, let's say on this, I'm gonna do a symmetric press pull. So that means I need one millimeter up, one millimeter down. So if I do one, it'll make it two. To me, that looks a little thick. I don't think that's what I did either on the original. So I'm gonna go 0.8, bring it down a little thinner. That looks okay to me. So that means we have 1.6 millimeters thick on the tail section. I'm going to make that a new body. I'm going to say okay so now what we have here is two bodies. We have a front and a back. I need to connect those up. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into create. I'm going to do create a loft. I'm going to take this profile and this profile. Now Fusion is going to go in there and it's going to say let's connect these two things. How do we do that? And that's how it does it. It determines where to go puts them together. So then I go down here, I say join. Now what we have is one body between those two pieces coming off of that sketch. And then what we can do is come in here and clean it up. I'm just going to hit F, make that a fillet. 
I'm gonna bring that like that. I'm gonna do the same here. We'll see if it allows us to do a nice fillet on this. It may not, but you never know. You gotta try it first. I'm gonna try that, do like a 0.4 just to be safe. There we go. So we can bring that down or up and do like 0.8. Yep, see now it's gonna freak out on us. 0.6, it'll kind of bring it down in there. Now the thing you could do too is you can cut this profile here before you extrude it all the way here. And then you can have it loft across this whole area so that gives it a nicer transition. Uh, depends on kind of what you're looking for. But we can do a fillet, do a rule fillet on this profile. What a rule fillet is, is it takes a face, any of those corners, it does a fillet on it. So we can do it like 0.2. I mean, you can get, you can do whatever you really want here. I mean, we could do 0.5 on that side, do a control, click on that. Now we have rounded edges, right? You just mess around with the fillets at different ways, different uh, press pulls to make it what you thought in your head from your sketch. So that's essentially what we're dealing with there. And then uh, eventually what you can do is end up branching that out. And this is how you come up with that. So all you have to do for that is just take the body, do a control paste. So that's control C, then control V. So you copy and then paste. Then you're just setting these up where you want them to be, right? So then if Eventually you set those up where you want them. You end up with something like this. You get your little uh, channels on your main tree where the plastic saw will come down. So then what I did is I made it go all the way to the edge of the mold. So what happens there is when you're done uh, pouring the plastic saw, you can just scrape that sprue off of the edge and you don't have to go in there and remove each one by hand. It makes it really nice. Also, these are like 0.6 millimeter uh, in diameter pipes here. And those uh, give really great action. So ends up being a little longer of a bait, but I think it, it gives a little bit nicer action in the water. So I think overall, really easy, simple design that seems to uh, catch fish. So far, the mold's holding up really well. Each injection to this mold, I get 10 baits out of it, which is really, really nice. So you can pump out quite a few really quickly uh, it seems to hold up really well there's no real dimpling issues or anything because the plastic can flow through so fast and then it sets up on the outside really quickly so it ends up any plastic it needs it pulls into so uh, turns out really really well so if this is where you're leaving me because all you cared about was the cat or 3d printing i appreciate you watching i really do thank you Hopefully you can watch some other videos on the channel. Check out that uh, episode 2 of Soft Plastic July where we turn this into an actual mold. If you care about the actual settings on the printer and whatnot, it was printed in PLA and it was printed at 0 .08 millimeter layer heights. So pretty, pretty high resolution, very low layer height on there and uh, seemed to print really well. You do see some layer lines, but not, not a whole lot, not enough and the fish don't seem to care. So I do appreciate it. Maybe consider giving it a like, uh, maybe subscribe before you leave. Would appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, let's go fishing. to another ridiculously loud episode of Elliot in the car. We're going to a lake about 30 miles south of me uh, today. It's got bass, walleye, pike. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. So hopefully we get to catch something. Uh, don't know, never fished it. First time fishing it, so I'm not really sure what to expect. But you know how that goes. New water, fun. I'll try the edges, you know, try lay downs and stuff like you do for bass on a lake. It's a plan for today. We'll see if it happens. Just right outside the boat launch here. And uh, this looks pretty good, I think. So 
I'm going to try this little offshoot slough here. Uh, work the edges there for the Bassasaurus Rexes. And uh, we'll see what happens. Looks pretty good though. That's the thing about these little lakes that are common, you drive by them. You don't really ever know what's in it. The locals won't tell you anything. So, you just need to try it. The whole boundary of it is surrounded by County Park. I think that's why it looks so well maintained. It's got this riprap around it. I think there's a chip, there's an outlet flow dam right there. I think maybe working that edge might be good. And then if not, we'll motor all the way up into the back. Mid-August. Usually it's a lot warmer. Ooh! Might have been a stump. Could have been a fish. I don't really know. I got, got a hedge crawl on there and packer backer. So it's that dark green to yellow fade with a green and yellow jig. Oh yeah. What is going on? I just, I don't understand it. Like water temp still 74. Even though it's a bag bay, 76 now. I'm in like three foot of water. So it's all look almost like cut banks. Got a craw on. And maybe this, maybe I need a different color. I don't know, I don't get it. Usually great color for stained water. Bluegill time. Crappie, whatever. Whatever's around. This is a trident. Panfish jig I developed. Let's see if it works. Hey -o. Look at that. The trident gets some bubblegum trident. Oh, well, that's good. Not skunked. Let's try and get another one on it. It's a little beat up, but. Pretty instant too. He wanted it. I wonder where they are. They're probably they're probably at right where I'm sitting. I almost guarantee it, but we'll try it around a little bit and see. I think that might be the key. I know I've done that uh, in the past, mostly in the spring, where I'd come into areas like this and you just run up the middle and you're just casting with a bobber just to see if you can find active fish. If you do, then you sit on those fish for a little while. Uh, might be the way to go today. I'm three to four feet of water. I'm just using a, a slip float with a sinker to help it get down faster. This is probably like a 132nd jig with my custom soft plastic on it. And then I'm just using, I don't even know what this is, Berkley Amp Extreme Sensitivity. I don't know, it's a seven foot medium, but realistically the tip's more like a light 
and then it's got an Akuma Avenger on it, 15A. Uh, it's a nice little panfish setup, I think. I like the little longer rods for the panfish, even. Uh, just makes it a little easier to maneuver around. So I'm just popping it, letting it come up a little, dropping, almost working it like an ice fishing jig. That's kind of why I like um, slip floats sometimes because you can pull it up, pull it down, and it stays relatively in the same place. It's kind of nice. Uh, if you do that with a standard float, uh, you'll move it around and possibly off of the fish. There he is. A white crappie it looks like. Got that guy in the same little deal. Little 132nd with a trident. Try over here, maybe they're on this side. A little deeper over here. Three and a half or so out of, well, on the graph, so probably four and a half. Yep, there's another one. A little better fish this time. A little better. Ooh, the, oh, there he goes. Oh, I wonder if you guys will see him. That bubblegum trident is smacking. This is just straight bubblegum, no flake, no nothing. There's one. Hopefully this is a little better fish, huh? It's a decent one. It's a bigger white crappie there. Pretty. Very pretty fish. This hook keep on this jig is messing up my plastic, but good thing I can pour 10 of these at once, eh? They seem to be right in the transition between deeper and shallower water. This is kind of like a pseudo bay right here. And they seem to be there. I don't think anybody else is really having a bang up day either, so this isn't really hot and heavy. There's one. Uh. Crappy fishing, yeah, I get the net all the time. Nice little lady. A good tip that uh, I got from uncut angling, been trying to do for a couple of years, is pull it like that so it sits flat in the water, horizontal in the water. They seem to respond better to that. Got one. Ooh, that's a better fish. There we go. You might get him eventually. That's a black crappie. You can see the difference. Bluegill. That's the first one of those guys. Oh, 
That was surprising. <laughs> oh. Well, we finally did it, folks. We finally did it, folks. We caught a largemouth bass. It only took eight hours and like 20 crappies later, but we caught one. Wow, you're not going to be able to see any of that, are you? Yeah. Well, that's, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't enjoy the fishing part, maybe you like the tutorial part or vice versa. I never know with these things. Uh, leave a comment down below if you got any suggestions or if you know how to target bass a little bit differently on a lake like this. Uh, very bass orientated lake. I mean, four foot deep everywhere, lay downs everywhere, stumps everywhere. Um, just almost too much good stuff to fish. So, the water temple is about 72 degrees all day. Uh, real low surface temp, so especially for this late in August. Um, but you know that's how it goes. Sometimes you don't catch a bass, so switch it up. See crappies work at the surface, catch some crappies. So had a good day. White and black crappie, which is great. Feel free to leave a comment down below. I answer all comments all the time. If you like the video, be sure to like. Maybe even subscribe. You know, it's kind of what I do here. Uh, uh, most of the time I catch more fish than this, but yeah. Most of the time. We'll go with that. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Until the next time, keep your amps up and your filament dry.